Welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you're doing well. One more life about Celta, and it's kind of more into the course. This is Bukhtar, Celta certified teacher, and welcome with me, Miss Laura. Hi. How are you, Miss Laura? How are you doing? Very well. How are you? Doing well. Thanks. Uh, how's, everything? how's everything? All good? All good so far. As long as the, mm -hmm. the computer works, we'll be happy. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, thanks to the internet connection. It's not making any problems for today. No escape. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, so I think people can hear and see us. Uh, clear voice, everything's fine. If you okay. can drop this in the, in the comments, that would be yes. uh, helpful. And if we start talking today about CELTA, what do I need for the CELTA course? The thing okay. will come up well, some of what, the last live, so good for people who didn't catch yes. the last one. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. please. Um, all right. So basically, um, if you've been through the interview process, um, mm. you've done your pre-interview tasks, sorry, your application form, your pre-interview task, you've had the interview, you've been accepted, you've paid mm. lots of money. So um, well done. Congratulations. You've uh, survived the application process. So now it's time to start the course. So what do you need? Well, first, your lovely self. Um, so really, whether you're doing online or face-to-face, um, but especially for face-to-face, -face, um, make sure you've got some pens, um, make sure you've got some paper, a notebook, mm -hmm. uh, and preferably uh, a large ring binder or a folder, the ones that open up where you have to clip your stuff in, um, you know, with the sort of the arm when you put your things in. That's particularly good for your lesson plans. Um, yes. You can also bring your laptop um, because nowadays, even on face-to-face -face courses, we tend to email your handouts um, to avoid potential contamination. So we will give some handouts, uh, sanitized, of course, but most of the time we'll email them to you, to the WhatsApp group that we make for each course. Um, and if you're doing an online, again, um, make sure you've got a folder ready called CELTA. And within the that folder, you need to make some new folders. Um, so I would say, you know, organize it according to um, language. So for example, um, language analysis, which will have all your vocabulary sessions, your grammar sessions, your language analysis sessions, okay? There may be another folder for skills, okay? Because we'll be looking at reading, writing, speaking, listening. Uh, another folder for phonology, because we do quite a lot of work on that. Um, another folder for what we call teaching styles or sometimes called lesson shapes, because we'll be looking at at least three different uh, techniques of teaching, okay, teaching types, um, and we'll go into more detail about that another time. I can um, share with them yeah. some, about a like, couple of minutes or something, I got sure. prepared my portfolio online. So I had it online, I can share with them. Uh, Excellent. But yeah, just some time. Yes. Oh, brilliant. Really good idea. So if you're doing an online course, you'll probably have it in Google. All right. Um, but that's up to you how you do it because everybody has yeah. a different way. So you can have it online. You can do it, uh, keep it on your laptop or your PC or whatever. Um, but the most important thing is to make sure it's organized. One more fold of what we call miscellaneous sessions, because in the last week we have some sessions that are, are difficult to categorize. So you just put them all in that folder. And during the course, you can ask your tutor. Um, yeah. But the more organized you are, the easier it will be to find things. So probably your most important folder will be your TP, teaching practice folder, with all your lessons. And you know, so we call them TP1, TP2, and so on. Um, because when you're doing a full-time course, whether it's online or face-to-face, -face, we're throwing a lot of information at you. So you don't want to be sort of going, oh, where did I put it? Which folder did I put it in? Um, so whether it's a, a real portfolio, a real folder, or mm -hmm. you know, um, in your computer, you need to be able to find things. Um, and sure. because you're stressed out, you, you sometimes forget. 
So the simpler it is, the better. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. So to sum up, you need to be organized and have portfolio, whether online or or uh, hard copy. Good. And we use it for your handouts, the things you will learn in the input, and to put your plans or lesson plans or whatever you're going to be asked yes. to do. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because the notes that we give you in the input sessions, you sometimes need to refer to them for your teaching practice or okay. for your assignments. So that would be, oh, I just forgot to mention that's another folder, assignments. Yeah. But of course, we mm -hmm. talk about that on the course itself when you actually do the course. But these are some of the things that we would advise. You know, yes. the more preparation, the better. Perfect, exactly. I would suggest to, uh, I would suggest this as well because uh, having everything online is very useful now because when I was doing myself that I had my BC virus, like got virus and oh. I lost all, yeah, that was, big nice problem <laughs> but thanks to technology i had everything packed online oh that's so clever was... having it backed up yes smart move so, and uh, yeah. well that's another good, reminder so. isn't it um sorry please make uh -huh. sure you've got a good antivirus uh you know package and um, exactly. preferably one that you pay for not the free ones because they don't always give you the protection that you need um and exactly. there are lots of cheap ones so don't be too cheap. <laughs> yeah, especially because on uh, this course. Okay, yes. so we might go to this next question. What's a typical day on the self -tech? All right, now this is where you really do kiss your life goodbye. All right, um, in most uh, places around the world, and we're no different, we start around nine or 9.30, depending on how, what we've decided. Um, so, Think of it as a, a nine till sort of six, 6.30 day. And that's the same whether you are face-to-face -face or online. So usually in the morning, um, we do some methodology input sessions. So these are basically, you know, lessons about teaching, you know, where we do sessions on how to teach grammar, how to teach vocabulary, how to teach the four skills, um, reading, writing, listening, speaking, um, how to teach pronunciation, um, how to analyze grammar for when you're teaching it in class, um, and a variety of other sessions. Sometimes we have one on authentic materials, like how to use songs in class, how to use mm. uh, video clips and things like this. Interesting. So each uh, session is usually about 75 minutes a lot long. Uh, sometimes this will vary depending on the session. Um, but most importantly, they are not lectures, all right? So mm -hmm. we do group work, pair work, um, all the techniques that we want you to use in your teaching practice. So Perfect. for you as a CELTA candidate, you can experience the, the sessions as if you were students, all right? So this will give you a clearer idea of how you will actually teach when it comes to your teaching practice. All right, so we don't do lectures. Sometimes um, we kind of do it like a kind of self-access. So we give you like a little sort of puzzle, maybe some grammar to analyze, and you do this in groups, and then you present it to the group afterwards, to the whole class. All right, so yeah. very, very interactive. Okay. Interesting. Okay, and um, usually within that morning, there's lesson planning, and this is basically to prepare you for teaching practice. So from the second day of the course, there will always be some teaching practice. Of course, you won't teach every day, you will teach every second day. All right, so mm -hmm. that takes you usually up to lunchtime. So we usually have an hour. Um, yeah. And of course, there are breaks during uh, the morning as well. So usually after every 75 minutes, we have a 10, 15 minute break, all right? Because we know that you get tired quickly. Um, yeah. So it's very important to have breaks, um, and especially where we are, in, you know, for a face-to-face, -face, um, I tend to kick you outside so you're not sitting in the same room. Mm -hmm. So it's good for you to go outside, especially these days where you shouldn't be spending too much time in the same room with other people um, yeah. just in this. Um, but of course, as we said before, we do take precautions. Um, we're using masks, we're sanitizing and everything else, and, you, and distancing. So the afternoon, 
uh, in our case, and this will vary. Some centers do it in the morning, some centers do it uh, in, in the afternoon. We do our teaching practice in the afternoon. So mm -hmm. usually from about 2, 2.15, um, for about two and a half hours, we have the teaching practice. So this is probably the most important part of the course because this is what you came for um, to improve your teaching techniques. Now, the lesson that you teach that day was planned the day before. So when we have lesson planning in the morning, you are preparing for the next day. All right. So this is what teaching practice looks like. Um, you basically have 45 minutes each. Um, and our course, like most courses, means that you have eight times 45 minute lessons, which equals six hours or 300 and, sorry, six, uh, six hours of assessed teaching or 360 minutes. This is a Cambridge uh, regulation. There's no negotiation. That's just how it is. So you'll teach four lessons with one level and then four lessons with another. So let's say number one teacher gets up, he or she teaches his or her 45 minutes, sit down or online, you go off for the moment. Um, and then number two comes and teaches his or her lesson, same thing again. And then number three teaches his or her lesson and that's the end. Now, each time uh, you have taught your lesson, uh, you will be given a self-reflection sheet to fill in where you sort of think about, mm, yes, I did this quite well, or maybe I should have been clearer when with my instructions, or maybe I should have done more pair work, and so on. So once those three lessons are done, okay, then we have another break um, so that the last teacher can write his or her self-evaluation, and then we come back, come together for verbal feedback. Um, now, this is probably for some people quite hard because this is all about constructive criticism and nobody, but nobody wants to be criticized. We all want to be told we're fantastic. Um, so, of course, we're not going to tear you down, but we want you to be sort of honest about how things went, you know. Um, you know, be a, try to be objective, which is quite difficult when it's your own lesson. But think about, you know, these things went well. Um, these are the things I could work on. Um, and we invite you to talk about each other's lessons. Um, but, you know, kindly. But it's all in accordance with a set of criteria. It is not the tutor's opinion. This is the criteria that Cambridge has given us. And we will give it to you before you start teaching so that you know what we're looking for. So there'll be no surprises, no nasties, okay? So that's very, very important. So we talk about this as a group, and at the end of that feedback session, uh, whoever was teaching that day, we give you your personal, official, written feedback, all right? Which will probably be more detailed than the verbal feedback, because there may be things that were in your notes that we didn't talk about in the group, because it was not relevant, all right? So this is the thing that you need to pay careful attention to. It will list the things that you did well, and it will list the things that you need to work on for the next lesson. And that's basically it. So by this time, we're up to about 6, 6.30. So that's oh, the it's very thing long day. Today. It's long, isn't it? Yeah, and it is. You haven't even finished lesson planning yet. So remember, mm -hmm. if it was your lesson time today, so well, this is Monday, then you won't teach again until Wednesday. But you'll have your notes from your tutor or your lesson plan guidelines and everything else. But well, it I means see. that in the evenings, uh, you haven't finished yet, because in mm -hmm. the evenings, uh, you're either writing your plan or you're or writing an assignment. assignment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no holiday. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Whether and, it's uh, online, face-to-face, uh, face. well. yes. and even sometimes when it's part-time, because you really, oh, yeah. you are packed things to do. So you're always busy. Well, exactly. Whatever. Now, that's an excellent point, Mokhtar, because uh, people often think, oh, part-time, it'll be easier. Part-time is only easier if you're not working. Um, and if a lot of people totally who, free. Yes. yes. But a lot of people who take part-time are usually working because they can't afford to take the time off. So yes. in some ways, part-time can be more difficult because you're holding down your job mm -hmm. and you're doing a course, which is one of the most difficult things 
I personally yeah. find, you know, if I'm working and studying, which I've done, you know, when I did my Delta, it was yeah. a nightmare, you know, yeah. it's really, really yes. hard. Yes. So yes, that is your typical day. It's long. So this is why we say to you, you know, um, get ready, maybe stock your fridge. And, um, you know, as we've said before, if you're a mum or a dad and you've got children to think about, make sure you've got somebody to help you. Um, you know, whether it's somebody's mum, your mother-in-law, um, a nanny, uh, somebody who helps with the children. Um, or if it's summer and you've got a summer house, bye babies, I'll see you in a, you know, a few days. Um, yeah. So do think carefully. It's not because we don't want you to love your children. Of course we do. But, you know, it is hard doing a course when you've got children, especially small children who want your attention, who need your attention. And they don't understand that you're studying and doing things like, mummy, mummy, I'm hungry, I want a biscuit. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very important on the online course because you're at home and the children might be at home as well. So, you know, like I said in the previous session, make sure you've got somewhere private to study where you can sort of close the doors. Like, I'm not here. Okay. Yes, like uh, I'm totally like having this busy thing. Don't, if you don't know what it is, I know. Yes. It. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't enter. <laughs> yes. Unless you're bringing uh, food. <laughs> this is a good reason. Yes. If you're bringing yeah, food, and then we might. Yes. Yeah. At this point, we might talk about the one hour break for lunch. How can I make use of it? I would say, um, okay, if you're teaching after lunch, if it's your teaching day, this is an mm. opportunity to have something to eat and just have a, you know, a final check. You know, make sure that you have all the things you need because you're a teacher and it's important to be organized. However, what I would like to say is actually lunchtime is lunchtime and you should be eating and uh, mm -hmm. resting. So if you were organized in the morning or the night before, um, you should have everything ready. The only thing I would ever tell a teacher to check um, for the last time is equipment. Make sure, you yes. know, your sound system is working if you're doing a listening lesson, if you're using the projector, make sure it's working, that you've got your folders open on the computer that is attached to the projector um, mm. so that, you know, um, you can open your PowerPoint. Um, if you're using anything online, again, you know, have a backup um, because things go wrong, things crash. Um, it's just part of technology. Um, make sure you've got all your board markers for writing on the board. Make sure you've got your lesson plan. Um, so it's just, you know, going through your checklist of things, making sure that you're ready. But do exactly. please use your lunchtime for eating because CELTA courses are very stressful um, mm. and it's easy to eat badly. So please make sure you eat your, your meals. Um, mm. You know, make sure that you've maybe got some, you know, good snacks or bring some fruit, uh, bring some nuts and things, things that are healthy snacks. Of course, bring chocolate. That's fine. I know that not the healthiest, but come on, you, you, you have the right. Whatever to makes you survive better. to the end Exactly. Of <laughs> yes. Lots of carbohydrates because they give you energy. Yeah. So, you know, exactly. bring on those carbs, Perfect. eat and drink as much as you want. And yeah. maybe take some vitamin tablets if you're really, you know, worried. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good advice, but I'm like, I don't like to take tablets at all. But <laughs> yeah, it's useful yeah. sometimes. Sometimes you just have to. I mean, yeah. okay, I don't take them unnecessarily, but if it's mm. things like vitamin tablets, I mean, nowadays, uh, and most of us should be taking some kind of vitamins because of COVID, especially vitamin D. Oh, yes, yes. So um, I'm afraid I'm taking mine. Plus, I'm older than you. Mm. So <laughs> when you're, you're older, fresh and active. <laughs> Well, just in well, case. Um, well, I think I have uh, my portfolio ready, uh, oh, so I great. might share it with it's you. If you have any, yes, if you have any comments, what I mean, navigate mm. uh, somewhere. Yes. Uh, I think yes. Mm. Hopefully, you can see it now. Ah, uh, yes, I can see Perfect. my glasses on so I can see it. Oh, well mm. done. Very organized. Yes. This is yeah. where uh, how we, uh, or I, I was asked to yes. um, sit it up. Very good. Yes, yes. Do you want to give any comments about the CELTA 5? Ah, now the CELTA 5 
is mm. your official record of everything you do on a Celtic course. Okay. Yes. Um, this is a booklet issued by Cambridge. So um, it actually is an incredible source of information. The first mm. few pages are about the grading procedures and the equal opportunities uh, policy. Please remember when you do a British course um, that we all have to abide by the equal opportunities regulations. And this means that you don't discriminate against people because of their gender orientation or their religion or their culture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this also includes sexual orientation. I know this is a difficult subject for some, but it doesn't matter what you think or believe. We all have to treat each other with respect. Okay. Exactly. Because this is what equal opportunities means. So by uh, attending the CELTA course, this means you have to abide by those regulations. So it explains this. Um, and then it also explains the procedures for appealing if you're not happy with your grade, okay? Because mm. it does happen, um, thankfully not too often, but there's usually a situation, you know, it's not unknown that somebody says, oh, but I wanted a higher grade, you know. Well, we all want higher yes. grades, but you have the right to appeal. And it shows you the procedure which you read and sign to make sure you've understood. Mm -hmm. Another page lists all the observations that you do of um, experienced teachers. Okay. Yes. This is something else that's often included in the course. Um, sometimes we do it during. When I say often, it's always included. Yeah, this is a in part, a part of the writing you do. So that uh, yes. if we reflect to the how how you should have your writing skills, really good because Absolutely. you write a lot. Mm. Yes, indeed. So mm. you know, this is your you know observation is something that you have to do as part of the course. So you'll list all of those. Then another page lists all your lessons that you taught and the grade that your tutor gave you. All right. yes. And another page is all your assignments. There are four. So each time you complete an assignment and it's been passed, you have to write in that you've done it. And of course, remember, confirm that it's your own work because remember the rules about plagiarism, which is yes. not accepted. So if you plagiarize an assignment on the CELTA course, it will automatically fail. There is yes. no, you know, there's no second not chance. Even there is not even a submission. No submission. Now, whereas mm. if you do an assignment and parts of it are wrong or missing, Cambridge gives you a second chance called a resubmit. Mm. Okay? Like fix this and that Absolutely. and then submit again. Exactly. But plagiarism mm. is different. Plagiarism is usually an automatic fail of the assignment. So please don't. Okay. Like I said yeah. before, it's easy to Your catch. teacher even, yes. yes. And you're a teacher. Stop it. <laughs> yeah. um, now, what it also lists, um, what is also in the CELTA 5, are the details of the, the, in fact, the more lengthy details of the Cambridge grading criteria for your lessons. Exactly. I think this is very essential um, to have a look at yes. before the course. Not enough people do this. Um, now, of course, uh, you don't get it until you start the course. But in the yes. first week, it's a good idea to go through it and have a look yeah. because mm. it sh we give you a summary that you can use for your teaching practice, but the detailed explanations are in the CELTA 5. Um, yes. And on the back page uh, is, of course, the information that everybody wants to know about are the criteria for the different grades. Mm. So again, have a look. You know, there are no and, secrets. Uh, I think, oh, sorry for interruption, but I think yes. this is a very good uh, thing to read not even to reach the, the point that you want to appeal for the grading. Yes. So do these, get this great. Yes, up to you, you know. Mm. Okay, nothing is guaranteed, but you know, at least you know why and how, all right? Exactly. Um, because right. we all learn at different rates, um, you know, and there's no right or wrong. We just mm. all do our best. That's what we want you to do. Um, and also in the CELTA 5, um, there are details of the tutorials because you'll have at least one tutorial on every CELTA course where you have a one-to-one -one meeting with your tutor to talk mm -hmm. about your progress. And this is a confidential meeting. Um, yes. Nobody else is allowed to attend, not without your permission. Um, and this is, as I say, it's a one-to-one -one, and this is all recorded, you know, how you're doing on the course, what you need to work on, uh, anything you wanted to discuss that you couldn't talk about in front of the rest of the group. All right. Yes, so exactly. this is an official document. Um, usually, uh, okay, for an online course, um, it will be a soft copy. 
uh, for a face-to-face, -face, it's usually a blue booklet. Um, yes. Although nowadays we are using it uh, online again to avoid the uh, risks of cont potential exactly. contamination. All right, yeah. just so that you know. Okay. 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 Well, but I think we good example. Our... Thank you, Mokhtar. Yes. That's very nice. More than welcome. Yeah. Good. Perfect. Uh, we we'll get back to um, some questions. Uh, Daniel asks, which textbook did you read? Uh, I think if you mean the books to get prepared for the CELTA, we've talked about this uh, last live uh, mm -hmm. session we had. Mm -hmm. And if you mean uh, the textbooks or the course books we use uh, when you get the TPs, do you have any answer for this? Okay. Events, um, I think, or, is it, hmm. Yes, no, it's a good point. I mean, because not everybody attends all the lives. So if mm -hmm. it's for methodology and for you to get ready for the course, then, of course, uh, Practical English Usage by Michael Swan for grammar. That still yes. works. And uh, Learning Teaching by Jim Scrivener. Um, and we can list those uh, again. When you're accepted, actually, that will be, you know, those books will be mentioned. All right. Mm. So you, they won't be, um, you know, you won't be surprised to see them because they're very commonly used on CELTA yes. courses around the world. Um, I would never say read these books from cover to cover because it's too much. But, mm -hmm. you know, you could sort of start looking at the sections on teaching grammar or how to teach vocabulary, you know, little things like that, um, or about lesson planning, um, because they're very, uh, learning teaching is quite easy to read. Um, practical English usage is a book that you use to refer to something. So when you're teaching grammar, you go, go to it, look at the explanations um, and so on. If you're referring to the books that we use to teach the students, um, they vary. Um, you know, it's quite common on most CELTA courses to use books like English File, Cutting Edge, um, sometimes Headway. Um, the, these are usually the old favorites. The only reason we use yeah. them is because these are the books that you will most commonly see around the yeah. world. All right. Yes. It's not because we think that these books are better. Um, there are other books, of course, that people use, like Empower, which is a very nice uh, course book. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, another one that just uh, slipped my mind, like Speak Out, which is a very nice speaking book. Um, mm -hmm. There are lots and lots of books. So, oh, and Face to Face, for example, that's quite commonly yes. used. Um, so, uh, we decide uh, just before the course which uh, course books... As a CELTA tutor, you decided this. Yes, the tutors yes. decide that. Um, mm -hmm. Because we usually use... Uh, we don't use the same series for the levels. Like for maybe elementary, we use this series, this book, mm -hmm. and then for intermediate, a different one. Because the idea is to give you... So that you have a little experience in using two very commonly used books. All right? Yes. That's, that's why most CELTA centres around the world tend to use those books. It's just because it's very likely that you will see those books again and again. So it mm -hmm. gives you an idea. You're not going in cold into your first teaching job. So, Perfect. Okay. So. Okay, nice. I hope uh, this is answering your question, Daniel. And if we go to the second or oh, the third, I can remember how many questions we went for uh, so yeah. far. Uh, what what is teaching? Yeah, sorry. I think this is the third, uh, which yeah. is like, what well, is... Nice. Uh, teaching practice. What is yeah. teaching practice? And uh, do we teach real students? Yes. Damn um, good question. Uh, the answer is yes. And as I said, teaching practice is usually something that you have been helped with the day before. Uh, basically, you will teach um, a variety of lessons, but you have to teach two levels. And this is the same on CELTA courses all over the world. This is a Cambridge rule. So there's no Again, no choice. You can't sort of say, oh, I don't teach low level because I don't like it. Um, no. Oh. Yes, sorry. Um, you know, because you get some teachers, I only teach intermediate and upper intermediate. Well, you that's be, not good yes. You can't um, be a teacher to only yeah. teach one or two levels. Um, mm -hmm. So that's not very good for your professional development. So you have to teach a low level and a high level. So our course, like most CELTA courses around the world, uh, has you teaching elementary and intermediate. So some of you will start teaching intermediate and go to elementary after two weeks. Some of you will start elementary with elementary and then you'll go to intermediate after two weeks. Mm 
Because as I said earlier, you have to teach four lessons, okay? Four lessons with each level. So four lessons elementary, four lessons intermediate. Now, um, within those lessons, we try to give you a variety. So this is also very important for grading purposes. So we try to make sure that you teach grammar at both levels, vocabulary at both levels, and skills at both levels, okay? Yes. So again, this helps us with grading because some people, and I am one of them, we all have our preferences for levels. I personally love teaching beginner and elementary, okay? Um, so I would happily spend my life teaching beginner and elementary, but that's no good for me. Um, so it's so that we can say at the end of the course, you can teach two levels reasonably well. Because what sometimes happens on a course is that there's one level that you teach really well with, you know, let's say you start with uh, intermediate and you go, yeah, and all your lessons are really good, your tutors are praising you and everything. And then you move to elementary and suddenly you realize that you can't give clear instructions um, they don't understand you, and suddenly your progress starts to go down, you know, before it goes up. So Yeah, this is a very tricky point. When you start problem. with elementary, uh, so, sorry, uh, with intermediate, then you go to elementary. You have to be very ready to the big change uh, in levels between them. Exactly. And the opposite as well. Yes, yes. Mm. Because people who got used to teaching elementary, they learned how to simplify everything. Um then they go to intermediate and suddenly the students are asking really difficult grammar questions. Um, yeah. And they sort of go, mm, 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 oh, I don't know. Um, yeah. So, you know, both levels have their difficulties. There's no, you know, easy way to do something. And that's why it's important, you know, that you teach different levels so that mm. you become comfortable um, with a variety of levels. You'll always have your favorites. I mean, I've taught every level, um, but, you know, elementary and beginners are still my favorite levels. OK, but yeah. um, I can still walk into the other levels and still enjoy teaching those lessons. Um, but my first love is, is elementary. That's, you know, that's me. Mm -hmm. But everybody is different. Uh, lots yeah, of people sure. say, oh, elementary. Oh, why? It's so boring. Um, I find it the opposite. But, you know, me that's too. Fun. It's enjoyable when they go it's like, wow, I, I really yes. because they feel the progress faster yeah, exactly. than. It's uh, very motivating. Uh, yes. Yeah. Very rewarding. So it gives the teachers the, the, uh, the satisfaction of improving Absolutely. somebody's language. Yes. yes, I couldn't agree more. So yes, we use real students. So you're not teaching each other. So this is perhaps what separates uh, courses like CELTA and Trinity TESOL from other teaching courses. We have real students. They are young adults from uh, age from 16 upwards. Um, mm -hmm. They volunteer. They don't pay for the class. Um, yes. So... Um, if they like the lessons, they stay. If they don't, they go. So that's your feedback sometimes. They vote with their feet. Um, yeah. Thankfully, most students stay because they're enjoying it. Um, but the nice thing is that, you know, the fact that if they keep coming, that's wonderful feedback for you as a teacher because um, they don't lose anything by not attending. You know, mm. um, they could leave any time say, oh, well, I'll just go meet my friends in a coffee shop, you know, or I'll go to the beach or whatever. Um, so if they keep coming, that's really nice because with adults, we can't force them to come to class. It's not like teaching children. Children have to go to school. Mums and dads uh, take them to school and go, right, you, school, bye. All right. Yeah. Um, whereas adults have a choice. So if they're not happy with something, they don't show. Um, so, yes, they are real students because, again, otherwise the teaching experience uh, won't be real. So we need to see yeah. how you cook with real students, not just Perfect. pretend ones. Yeah. And my experience about like seeing people taking self after me, even uh, with IH Cairo, is like people, the, the TP students, they take breaks like, ah, oh, well, when is the next session? And uh, oh, by the end of the class, it's like, uh, over the whole course, come on, when is the next one? Yes, they but want yeah, to continue. This is yes, really, yes exactly. I because some really, candidates yeah. really doing a good job to improve their Absolutely. Themselves. I think it, actually in many cases, your TP students, your teaching practice students, will probably be the most motivated students you, you could meet. Yes. You know, they usually really enjoy coming to the class. It's a bit like a social club for them. They meet mm. other people. Um, they like chatting to you in the break times. You know, it's it, it, they want usually want to be there. You know, nobody's being dragged in. Um, yes. So that's very, very nice. So, in, you know, do bear that in mind. You know, they want to enjoy the experience as much as you do. 
I know you're being assessed and it's stressful, but Mm -hmm. usually if you just sort of try to relax a bit and not fixate on, is this going to be an A? Is this going to be a B? Um, Then you'll probably just get on with the business of teaching and making sure your students learn something because that's what teaching is. Not, you know. So you'll be uh, knowledge and learning oriented more than grade oriented. Oh, please. Mm. Yes, yeah. it's not about that. And if we're, yes, exactly. And if we're talking about the help provided by the CETA tutor to mm. uh, the CETA candidate, when before I teach, they're mm. just like some imposition, go to the book, textbook, teach, or <laughs> do I have some kind of support? Uh, you have plenty of support. Um, mm. So we give you, like, you'll actually at Reach Out, we give you two lessons that are kind of planned for you for your first two. Because um, as we nowadays on CELTA courses, we get a mix of experienced and inexperienced teachers. Mm-hmm. So the inexperienced teachers will be just going, I don't know what to do. Yeah, um, because they have yeah. some experience in teaching real yeah. fast. So. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then the experienced teachers will be like, oh, well, I've always done it this way, so I'm going to do it like this. So um, we try to, as I said before, you know, give you a different sequence to what you might be used to. So this is to help you sort of develop more communicative ways of teaching. And yes. um, so we've usually kind of written you what I call the Idiot's Guide lesson plan. Um, and then as the course continues, again, we still give you an idea of what to teach. And excuse me, we give you some notes. OK. And we sit with you. All right. So and this is the lesson. The assistant yes. lesson plan. Exactly. All mm-hmm. right. So assisted lesson planning session, which usually takes place in the morning. All right. Uh, the day before you teach. All right. So mm-hmm. you're you have time. So in the assisted lesson planning session, you've only got an hour. So you, usually the tutor has to talk to three people. So that'll mm-hmm. be like 15, 20 minutes each. Then we'll make sure that we answer the main questions that you have. But of course, then you're going to go home or after the course is finished, you're going to sit down and then go through the whole thing again to make sure that you, you know, you're feeling ready. Um, Mm -hmm. Now, if you do the course with us, I'm one of those nice tutors that allows you to email me or send me questions at night, but not after midnight. Okay. After midnight, you're on your own. Okay. Um, Not all tutors do this, but uh, the reason I do this is because I remember, you know, as I said, um, many moons ago in the dinosaur era, when I did my course in 1987, um, we didn't have technology, okay? So yes. um, it was the phone. That was it. Everything, mm-hmm. we wrote all our plans, everything by hand. But I remember once or twice sort of sitting there in my flat in London, sort of thinking, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I wonder if I could just call my tutor. And, uh, and we didn't have their phone number, so we couldn't mm-hmm. call them. Um, so I'd often oh. sit there for like two or three hours, sort of, going, oh, but I don't know, maybe I'm doing it wrong, maybe I should do this, maybe, mm, you know, wasting time. So personally, uh, I, as a tutor, would prefer that you either sent me a quick WhatsApp message or just gave me a quick call and said, look, Laura, I think I've got it right, but I'm, I'm just not sure about this bit and this bit. It usually takes five minutes, six minutes to answer that question. So I would mm-hmm. rather spend those five or six minutes with you to um, allay your fears rather than you sitting there for hours, you know, getting upset and worrying for nothing. All right. Yeah. So, you know, that's my personal <laughs> opinion. Not every tutor does that. That doesn't mean to say that I'm right and everybody's wrong. That's just something that I remember from my own course that always, you know, haunted me not being able to ask yeah. a question. All right. Yeah. But again, no, not not after midnight. <laughs> yeah, this is I think uh, no. okay. Like even yeah. midnight? Well. It's not 24/7 okay. service. No, no. <laughs> I do like to sleep sometimes. <laughs> I'm not a complete okay, <laughs> Yeah. Just like a couple hours so we'll be there. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like mm-hmm. at least four or five hours, if you don't mind, please. <laughs> yeah. Just as if uh, sometimes on a course, the teacher sends me an email at uh, four o'clock in the morning. And, and I see it when I wake up at six or seven. And I think, well, I'm not checking that now because I'm going to work. And I'll see them uh, at the, you know, on the course. And I'll say, I sent you a lesson plan and you didn't look at it. And I say, yes, it was 4 a.m. I am allowed to sleep. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> it made me feel bad because I didn't look at it at 4 a.m. Uh, I should have been yeah. up to check. Like, mm, no, I do need some sleep. Yeah, Come on. We're, we're yeah. still human beings. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, if we move to the next one, uh, what difficulties trainees might have and what is the yeah. most challenging part about CELTA? Well, I'd say TP is one. That's teaching practice um, mm -hmm. because... Some people find it difficult to accept constructive criticism. So the feedback session and TP is probably um, one of the most challenging aspects. As mm -hmm. I said before, please don't take it personally. It's to help you it's develop. For right? the sake of improving your, yeah. Yes. It's not to make us feel, you know, oh, I'm so clever and you're not. No. Um, that's how you learn. We all, you know, we tend to learn by making mistakes. So... You know, we're not perfect. We still make mistakes as well. Um, so we're just here to help you do as well as you can to get the best out of yourselves. Because remember, your success is our success. If you do well, then I feel good, you know, on a totally selfish note as a tutor. All right. Um, just as if you all get high grades, then I think, oh, great. You know, um, I feel happy to be a part of it. So nobody yes. wants you to fail. Nobody wants you to do badly. All right. So that's probably one of the greatest difficulties, especially sometimes when your lesson didn't go as well as you'd hoped. Like I said to you before, you know, in the previous live, sometimes you've been up all night preparing this amazing lesson and it just bombs. OK, mm. it doesn't work how you planned it. I remember that happening on my course when I did it, you know, a couple of times I'd thought I prepared this fabulous lesson and it failed. And I was just like, ah, um, mm. you know, it happens. Yeah. All right. It happens. It's, you know, as I always say, you know, you're a good teacher having a bad day. It doesn't mean you're a bad teacher. All right. In most yeah. cases, you're just having a bad day. And mm -hmm. every lesson is a lesson. Some lessons go well, some lessons don't go so well. So you learn from it. Sure. Probably the other uh, most difficult part for most people on the course is organization. Because mm -hmm. there is a lot of work to do in a short period of time. And this is why we say to you, please, please, please clear those schedules, you know. Um, you know, um, make sure that you haven't got any work responsibilities, that you've told the place where you work, you know, I can't, you know, uh, t teach any lessons. I can't do anything unless it's something absolutely urgent. And even then I would say, don't do it unless unless your director or your head of department is threatening you with losing, you know, sacking you or the something job. like that. Yeah. Other matter. <laughs> Sometimes you have no choice. Um, and, you know, just be honest with yourself. Like I said, you know, some of us are naturally very organized and some of us aren't. Um, mm. So the more organized you are, the more comfortable you will feel. This is why I said, mm. you know, organize your folders, whether they are, virtual or physical because there's nothing worse than let's say you're doing a reading lesson the next day and you can't find your reading notes from the session that your tutor gave you so i'm going oh. <laughs> you know um you lose lots yeah. of time exactly and then you end up having to either what's up your tutor or what's up your group has anybody got the reading session notes and they're okay well i'm i'm preparing my lesson i haven't got time for this you know um so Try to be as organized as you can. And if you're not naturally an organized person, um, buddy you up will with learn somebody. how to do it. <laughs> and you, exactly. Because <laughs> um, like you, the military. It's, yeah. Yes, it is a bit like sort of boot camp in a way, isn't it? Because the deadlines for the work are quite tight. You know, we say, here's your assignment, you know, your first piece of homework. We want to, we give you the weekends to do them, to be honest, on full-time courses. Um, but remember, during that weekend, you might also be preparing a lesson. So, you know, yes. the deadlines are quite tight because we need to mark them um, and give them back to you within 24, 48 hours at the latest. Mm -hmm. And especially if you need to redo parts of it, you know, you, again, yeah. you know, time's rolling on. So um, mm -hmm. you do have to keep on top of things. And we'll sort of nag you and say, look, you know, you remember you've got to bring, you know, hand in this assignment on this day. We give you the dates and everything. Mm -hmm. All right. And of course, uh, if you're teaching uh, that day, you have to have everything ready um, because we can't uh, generally reschedule your teaching practice. So it's no good coming to your tutor 
one or two hours before the lesson and saying, I haven't got my lesson plan. Mm. Right. So you're going to have to teach that lesson unless you had a very serious emergency. You know, as we said before, God forbid, you know, we've had a couple of situations where somebody's uh, relative was seriously ill and they had to go to hospital to be with them. Of course, mm. we will find a way around that. That's mm. something quite different. But, well, you know, I was a bit tired and, you know, everybody's tired on a self, of course. Um, so you've got to somehow find that energy. It's like being a parent with a screaming six month, eight month old baby. You know, parents are amazing. You know, their kids are screaming all night because they're teething, you know, and then somehow they, they wake up and go to work, you know, and, you know, God bless you. It's amazing that you can do this. Um, so, you know, organize yourself. If you're the kind of person that needs to, you know, have a little rest at the end of the day, go home. Give yourself half an hour's rest. Give yourself an hour's rest. Set the alarm, all right? Um, maybe tell one of your buddies on the course, um, I want you to ring me at you know, this time to wake me up, or your mum or your dad or a friend, anything, um, so that you organise yourself, okay? So that's probably one of the most difficult parts, you know. I think dealing with feedback and being organised, because there's a lot to do in a short time. Like I said, academically, it's not so challenging but you do have to be ready. So systematic a bit. I know for some people that's a bit like, um, but teachers are supposed to be organized. You know, you yes. can't sort of go to class and say to your students, well, I went out and I met my last my... night. So, yeah, sorry, like I didn't prepare my son, no. We'll, we'll just see how it goes, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, especially in the real world where students are paying a lot of money for those lessons. So, you you know, you have to be prepared. Mm. It's professional. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Well, okay. and um, any special advice for CELTA candidates? Because I think enjoy we're it. Work enjoy hard, it. do your best and enjoy it, okay? Hmm. I know sometimes you, when you're, you know, up at three in the morning, um, cutting it's out like, your uh, people, I'm enjoying. Enjoy this, are you serious? <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, teaching is, is an enjoyable job, you know, and if you're it not is. enjoying it, then, you know, with Celtas, it's a kind of, you know, you laugh together, you cry together. Because mm. like all the other <laughs> participants on the course, you are in the same boat. Everybody's yes. going through a similar experience. And you do learn a lot. Um, mm. It's like everything else. You learn as much as you want to or can. Um, and it's about doing your best. As long as you try, that's, you know, that's the best advice, you know. Just do what you can. You know, not everybody learns quickly, um, but as long as you just keep trying and keep making a little bit of progress each time, that's great. Mm -hmm. You know, just do your best. It's not about being a superstar or a rock star. You know, we're teachers and our, jobs, our job essentially is to make sure students learn. If they're not learning anything, then we're wasting our time and theirs, all right? So please, you know, do try to enjoy it. Like I said, because the thing with teaching adults is adults are much easier than kids. They don't fight in the classroom usually. You don't have yes. the huge classroom management problems. You know, I've oh. taught kids and they can be little devils. You know, like, he took my pencil. <laughs> okay. And um, this is not <laughs> something you can escape in listening planning because exactly. a part of it is uh, classroom um, anticipated problems and exactly. solutions. Yes, so. but you, see, you don't have those problems teaching adults. I mean, the worst problem usually with teaching adults is that they speak too much of the mother tongue, you know, so you sometimes have to remind oh. them, you know, please don't speak Arabic or please don't speak your language. We'll try to speak English and stuff like this and just make a yes. joke out of it, you know. Oh. Um, so, you know, that they are easy to teach compared to teaching children. You know, children, mm. you have to be much more sort of organized in terms of your classroom management. But adults are generally uh, enjoyable to teach because they choose to come to class. This is a big thing. This is the big difference between kids and adults. Children have no choice. They have to go to school. Okay? Yes. Adults choose. Go ahead. Okay. Nice. And we got a question from Hazim. Hazim asks if we can recommend him some uh, activity books for grammar teaching. Oh, lots. Um, probably Hasim actually is, 
is one of sure. uh, my buddies who had wow. uh, the shelter with him. Yeah, he's, he's really, done the uh, shelter with teacher. <laughs> yes. Excellent. So he's asking me for yeah. Well, yeah. I'm sure on the course you use the uh, reward resource packs. Mm. Uh, if you remember those. Um, okay. Reward is a series by Macmillan. It's old, but it mm -hmm. still has lots of really good ideas for teaching grammar, for practicing grammar. So if you're looking for activity books with uh, mm -hmm. activities in them, then there's reward resource packs. So there's like starter, elementary, packs. intermediate, and so on. Oh. This is really interesting. Mm. And they also have one for business English as well. Wow. Okay. So they got yes. everything ready, I think. Yes. It's basically look at the instructions, look at the index, think, okay, which tense am I teaching? Okay. Mm. And then it tells you which tense it's going to practice uh, or vocabulary. It tells you how long the activity will last. And then uh, it gives you some instructions on how mm. to use it. And then a photocopyable worksheet or activity that you need. So you can photocopy it without breaking copyright. Um, yes. If you need to cut it, it even shows you the cutting lines. Cut, cut, cut. Um, yeah. And it's ready-made, mm -hmm. you know. So it's not new, but old is gold. And reward mm. resource packs are a very good example of that. Okay. Perfect. Nice. Many thanks. Hope this is answering you. Has him. And uh, I think we might have some other lives about specific fields or specific yes, areas of the sure. language, like teaching vocabulary, grammar, and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got like lots of things to talk Absolutely. about in this field. Well, I think we've got we've come to an end uh, for okay. today, and we'll uh, drop your questions. We always check it if you have mm -hmm. any kind of questions related to so and we'll be answering it uh, in our next live. Many, many thanks uh, for Miss Laura having you uh, today talking about CELTA and much. how a practical day uh, looks like and waiting for you next time. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Bye. That was Mukhtar and Ms. Laura. See Good you night. in another live. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. See bye -bye. you. See you. Mm-hmm. <laughs>